Today we're going to talk about species, race, and ethnicity as they apply to uh, fantasy world building, which is the big caveat at the beginning, as in I'm going to sim uh, simplify this significantly, that's because we're here to use it for world building itself rather than examining races, species, and ethnicity, uh, which are their own forms of study and are really worth looking into if that is what interests you. Uh, but for us, we're just going to see how we can build better worlds with it. Uh, a species is a group of living creatures capable of exchanging genetic genetic material and producing viable offspring. The uh, viable offspring is the really important part on that one uh, because you can have things that look very similar. Um, you know, uh, lions and tigers, which we'll get to in just a second, look very similar, have a lot of physiological similarities, but they are different species and cannot breed. Um, yes, we know of hybrids, which are un uh, unviable offspring. Uh, the mule is one example uh, because it's a horse and a... Um, uh, a horse and a donkey and you put them together and but they have different number of, uh, of chromosomes so when they align there's always well that one right there is hanging out um, so it's now unviable uh, it, you can breed two mules together but they're not going to make a new mule same thing with the liger uh, if you've ever seen uh, Napoleon Dynamite or um, a tiger King, uh, you know about the Liger. Um, and you put a lion and a tiger together, and yeah, you can create an uh, offspring, but only from two species. species it is not itself a new species. Um, new species can eventually come out of this over time, but that's a whole nother Geraldo kind of right there. Um, now, in uh, fantasy, we have uh, four main fantasy races, five, I'm sorry, uh, humans, us, elves, you know them, dwarves, orcs, and then it's either goblins or ogres or sometimes trolls, but there's usually, you know, two brutish slash evil, and then your humans, elves, and dwarves, which are usually good and or neutral, um, you know, gnomes and halflings and hobbits sometimes fly in there, but, you know, the big five are... Uh, or humans, dwarves, elves, orcs, and goblins, slash ogres, yeah. So uh, we call them races, but that doesn't actually mean anything by our actual understanding of uh, what races are uh, in sociology. Um, do we mean species? Because, you know, can they breed together? If you get a, an orc and a dwarf, do they make uh, babies? And, well, yeah, I think gully dwarves, right? Anyways, like, um, so yeah, I think that's the question of can they breed? Because remember, species, can't really breed and produce viable offspring. Uh, but we really look at them as if they're very special things and like very specific, different species is how we kind of look at them. Um, and that's a lot of because we have racial attributes that we give them, which is an outgrowth of Dungeons and Dragons, which is the idea that uh, different fantasy races have different abilities, like the elves uh, plus one to dexterity, or you know, they're much more dexterous, while dwarves can drink a whole bunch, you know, that, and you know, Orcs are really strong, that kind of thing. Uh, we give them temperaments and abilities based on their, their races as they are. And uh, then we can also label them as either good or bad, which is another outgrowth of Dungeons and Dragons, which has another whole subject in and of itself. I'm gonna try to find a really great article about that and link it here. It should be on the bottom, hopefully, if I remember, uh, which is really good at looking at the racial abilities. Uh, that's something to look at differently. Um, we call them races, though that's not really a specific, you know, not really the correct term. And this is now growth of Tolkien's understanding of race. Uh, Howard used the same thing where, you know, he kind of meant species, uh, even though, you know, Aragorn does have uh, elvish heritage in him. And uh, I think, they think he says something about how the hobbits are more closely related to uh, elves than they are to humans. Anyways, this was a kind of 18th century anthropological classification that was an understanding at the time when he was writing all this. And that was, uh, they took basically, looked at biological and uh, continental areas where people were from and then just kind of labeled them. Uh, so it was all biologically based, supposedly, so it went skin color, uh, hair type, eye shape, that kind of thing. And then we kind of grouped them into like, you are black. You are, you know, uh, you are Asian, you know, that kind of thing. And so we like to think, or used to think at the time, it was all based on biology. It was, um, yeah, um, things that you could look at and observe. Uh, but actually race is a cultural construct because they are not separate. We are not uh, different. Our races are not separate. We can definitely interbreed. Uh, they point out that there is actually more... Um, 
the variation, genetic variation within each race, and I'm trying not to use air quotes every time I say that, than there is without it. So if you take an Asian and uh, African, there's more variation within the African, sorry, black, um, you know, genetics than there, you know, and within the Asian genetics than there are between the two of them, like against each other, if that makes any sense at all. Um, that, that said, we still use the term race uh, as a social construct. Um, and like the US census identifies black, white, Asian, Hawaiian slash Pacific Islander, Native American slash Alaskan. Uh, so it's still with us to this day, even though it's an imprecise term, uh, sociolo sociologically speaking. Um, you know, they're not separate, even though we've used that to um, justify a lot of things against other races and racism and such. Again, another subject in and of itself. Ethnicity, on the other hand, is um, race is supposed to be biological, ethnicity is supposed to be uh, social and cultural, uh, and it is a group that identifies with each other based on presumed similarities such as a shared language, ancestry, history, society, or social treatment within an area, which is a, you know, the last part there is saying, um, you know, you may not think of yourself as an ethnicity, but other people might think of you as an ethnicity. Um, it's cultural instead of biological, like I said, and it can change over time. I uh, mentioned in my book about there was a point in, you know, I think the 1800s where the Irish weren't considered white as a race, which is just goes to show what a, um, you know, physiologically speaking, you, you don't get much whiter than Irish folk. And uh, yet it was not, you know, considered, they were not considered white. So ethnicity and, um, and race have kind of blurred boundaries and they change over time. Um, some people associate the ethnicities with taxonomical traits or physiological similarities within the group. But again, you know, like the white skin is defined by other people um, and then being Irish, you know, that kind of being Hispanic is an example of an ethnicity um, in that it's cultural and that it's derived from Spain slash Hispania, but you know, all the folks in South America are more culturally tied to uh, Spain and the ancestry there than they are physiologically. Um, so ethnicity can uh, intertwine a lot more with religion and cultures than race does. Uh, the Jewish faith, for example, you know, is it a faith? Uh, is it a culture, is it ethnicity, or is it a nationality that's in with uh, Israel itself as the state, which nationality is the folks who live within you know, a state society. Uh, you know. um, so again, race and ethnicity can overlap, and they can overlap with religion as well as with nationality. Um, so you know, it is quite possible to be a black Hispanic American who practices Judaism. You know, so they all are on top of each other and just really know what you're thinking or what you're saying when you uh, use those terms in fantasy genre and then, you know, in real life. So for today's build, what we're going to do is build a species, a race, and an ethnicity, or several actually, I guess we should within it. Um, and we are going to do it with a non-human. So because we're building a new spe species, I'm going to do a humanoid, a new species is fun to say. And let us see what we're gonna get. We got five choices here and we got birds. So we're gonna build a new humanoid out of birds. I was really hoping for mammoths because I thought that was gonna be really cool. Alas, it was not to be. Cats and foxes, I heard canines was gonna be the one. And let's see what we got for our, I'm just gonna pick three this time. Elemental powers, that's from Dave. Magic Swordsman, also from Dave. Oh yeah, no wonder you won that one. And two moons. Oh, I've been avoiding two moons for a long time. All right, I don't have time for that one since we're looking at a uh, species and ethnicity. I don't really need that one. Magic nobles and non-magical peasants. Okay, no, that's gonna be interesting how that works with the uh, race and ethnicity there, uh, so, and socioeconomic class. Oh boy. It'll be fun. All right, so I will see you in a bit and hopefully have a new world with some new species, some new races within it, and some ethnicities. See you in a bit. So here we are 30 minutes later, and I'm gonna say this is not my best work, though it is kind of the most personal, which in a weird way, um, mainly because I had two species I was gonna pick from, both of them were birds. Uh, so I picked a Quaker parrot 
for a parakeet, if you will, monk parrot, uh, as it's known, um, and hawks. I did this because I used to have a little monk parrot who is no longer with us, and uh, also my son has uh, been finding uh, red-tailed hawk feathers, which are actually illegal to own, I learned, um, from the two hawks that live across the way. So I am taking all these things directly from my life uh, because that's where the best inspiration comes from, right? Um, so we have two different species, and that's the first thing. These are biologically different creatures. Uh, you would not expect a Quaker parrot, uh, which hopefully I'll put a picture up of, uh, and a red-tailed hawk to uh, breed. They are totally different. There are actually different breeds of hawk. Uh, I found out later, but uh, for now we're going to just really stay with one that we could, uh, we're gonna make races of it, don't worry. Um, so, but uh, since I really wanted to work with humanoids, because I haven't decided, I guess humans could live on this world, we can just, we can do the humans and elves, and then this bird race uh, that we just made up. Two races, actually. Two species. Ah, see, that's really difficult since we interchange those words so much in the fantasy genre. Um, so we have two species um, that we would probably call different races in the, um, in the story itself. Um, so again, uh, Quakers, uh, so for the purposes of uh, this world, uh, we're going to say both of them are humanoid, so we don't have to deal with the hollow bones. Um, we can just, uh, or wings, since uh, let's just make them humanoid and flightless, just because that would be, that amuses me and it's easier. Um, so both of them, you know, solid bones. Um, so Quakers, if you don't know, are uh, mean-spirited little, which does sound like racial attributed, oh, wonderful creatures that have a lot of personality. Um, they are small and they are communal. They build these um, uh, stick nests. Uh, I've lived in New York City. I've lived uh, outside of LA. I've lived in Dallas. I've lived in Boston. And there are Quaker communities in all of them, which is, you know, why they're actually legal to own in uh, California, not that it stopped them. Um, so anyways, they build these kind of cool nests, and um, and so we're gonna kind of, you know, use the, we're using racial attributes, uh, they're small, industrious, but mainly that they are communal and uh, smaller, so that we can, you know, state that that's what that, that species is like. A hawks, on the other hand, are solitary, and they're kind of simple if you actually find out about them, because uh, they have so much time spent or like evolution spent developing their amazing eyesight so i think they can read um it would be if they could read you know they could uh, read a um, writing like a mile and a half away um, they can see colors that we can't see because of their eyes but that means there's not another brain power left for thinking and stuff so they're kind of simple animals so we're going to keep that in mind with our two species um you know the the highly intelligent parrot offshoot and the less intelligent hawk offshoot um, neither of these species are going to have wings we're going to give them their clawed talonish hands um, less so for the quakers since they're going to be more makers <laughs> And um, instead of having the red-tailed hawk, which is its deciding feature, um, we're going to move it up to the kind of a plumage crest, um, more like a, you know, just plumage, like a secretary bird, which is another type of bird. Yay! Um, so, because we're going to have two different ethnicities, I'm sorry, two different races for each of these. Um, and this is race in the sociological sense, as in its physiological determinants, though it doesn't actually matter. So and this actually is true in uh, Quaker parrots, is that there are blue varieties and green varieties. The blue variety is the much rarer mutation that eventually came out. But if you breed two you know, greens together, you might get a blue. Uh, you breed two blues together, you might get a green. Um, they've recessively yada yada been reading about it. Um, you know, so if you want to go buy a blue Quaker, it's a lot easier than uh, it used to be. But the green is the more naturally occurring one. So they have green plumage, gray chest, or blue plumage, gray chest. So we're going to say that these are two different, um, two different races in the sociological you know, way that we say today. Um, and because of our um, fantasy conceits, which I can't believe I just now thought about mentioning, uh, we're magical nobles and non-magical peasants. Elemental powers and magic swordsmen. Um, I think I started with the uh, our uh, analog cultures slash species um, because that all plays into each other. And I decided that the non magical, uh, the magical nobles are going to be the blue race of um, which is kind of an ethnicity. I don't know. Anyways, of the um, of of the the Quakers, and they understand the language of the elemental magic. And uh, meanwhile, the green Quakers. 
are broken into so separate races because they're very physiologically different, though they can interbreed, so not really that physiologically and uh, different. Um, the green ones, uh, we're going to give them two ethnicities, and actually could be the more like four. Uh, we're going to have some called Dokken, which are the ones that were originally here in this area. Um, you know, they're more at peace with the hawk species, um, and you know, have, they're, you know, they've lived there a long time, but they're being slowly displaced by the Aleskis, which was the name of my bird, and um, it was a wonderful little bird. Anyways, they're kind of more new arrivals in the uh, longitudinal sense. Uh, you know, they've only been here for 200 years, they're slowly displacing um, the Dokken and the Hawks, which we'll get to in just a second. Um, they worship a crab god, mainly because my little bird used to eat crab on occasion. Yeah, so, and I thought that was funny. Um, you know, so anyways, this is them coming back from a different location. Um, you know, they have two different ethnicities in their ethnicity. You know, we can use a Northern Italian analog and an Irish analog, um, though I don't usually suggest um, using just hard one-to-one uh, -one kind of um, analog cultures, I would definitely say, like, take some of those things, look how they differentiate from each other, and then take some of those inspirations for building these new ethnicities. But we don't have much time, so we're just gonna show that even though they kind of come from the new world, you know, or the old world, I guess, to this new continent and are displacing the uh, original peoples, um, you know, there are divisions between them, um, ethno ethnographic, Anyways, we can have those. Back to our species, the hawks, um, the red tails. Um, there's a whole bunch of subspecies, which are actually different species of, uh, of hawks, um, but we're just gonna go with like the basic red tail hawk idea. And instead of being red tailed, we're gonna say red plumed. So, you know, red neck. And um, our racial differences on those are gonna be beak color and um, plumage. So you can have like a tan or a gray beak or um, a very dark red, plumage or very light brownish plumage, which is what they are in real life. And since these are solid creatures, we're going to say they're, um, you know, there's ethnicities or there's kind of a wanderer, one that they draw all of their, um, they draw from, uh, you know, the, this mythological character who they think they all descended from, they may have all descended from, who knows the story, who's a wanderer, we're going to use kind of, um, Aboriginal, uh, Australian Aboriginal idea of them. They are they're hunter and gatherers. They spread around the land. They make their living off of it, um, but they are slowly transitioning out of the hunter and gatherer work because of the Quaker species that is here and very industrious. Uh, the Quakers can harness the magical powers, the elemental powers uh, that the nobles have, and build uh, magical swordsmen, which are what was the other thing. And so they're using the hawks as they're much larger and stronger. They're using them with magical swords that they build to fight their wars. Um, you know, so that's the first one is the kind of wanderer eth uh, ethnicity of the, the hawks. And um, and then there's also the gossers, which I don't know why. I think there's I think there's a type of red tail hawk or one of the other type of hawks I was looking at. Um, and they descended from, or consider themselves descendants of a messianic character who is going to deliver them from um, these very small Quaker parrots that are like half the size of the hawks, but are bossing them around and are displacing them because they have the good technology. And that's why they are transitioning them by force out of hunter and gatherer. And are, um, you know, so then these gossers, which, you know, believe that they should not be this kind of, not slave race, but, you know, um, you know they shouldn't be used by the, the, by the Quakers. Um, uh, let's see, da, da, da. oh yeah, they are being subjugated and re-educated, um, as this often happens to ethnic groups um, by the, the people in power uh, at, the, at the four quadrant um, thing that I hopefully have a picture of up right now, um, which is how when um, one culture is uh, subsumed or uh, by another, uh, you know, the majority culture, a larger culture, I guess you could say, uh, how they react, how the folks in it usually react. Um, so anyways, hopefully that's up to make sense of this. Um, anyways, both of these ethnicities, the Hawks would have their own languages, probably several languages because, you know, yeah, just because you have an ethnicity doesn't mean that you speak that one language and um, yeah. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, this is not the, uh, again, not my best work. Um, Probably the subject probably deserved a little better, but as you can see, we have two different species. You know, look not not look like like they cannot interbreed at all. These are you know that's like trying to breed a human with a horse. 
you know, can't really happen unless gods or angels are usually involved. Um, biologically speaking, it can't happen. Once you throw magic into it, you can probably do whatever. Anyways, we have two different species. Each of the species are broken into races uh, that are uh, physiologically differentiated from each other. Um, even though it really doesn't matter, they can interbreed with each other. Um, but you know, like, oh, I've got a, you know, red. Um, red nape and my, my beak is this, so that means I'm this, you know, they uh, can look down on or look up to the others, like there's a lot we can do with the physiological stuff, and then we break each of those into their own ethnicities uh, based on where they've come from, their own kind of cultures, uh, what they believe, who they worship, the religions, um, philosophies, and yeah, so uh, there you go. Um, species, uh, races, and ethnicities. I hope you can use them to build better worlds.